Welcome back. In the previous step, we wrote simple code to try and list all the files which are present in a specific folder. So we did, listed both the files and the directories which are present in there. But sometimes you'd want to search the entire directory. So you'd want to do it recursively. In those kind of situations, you can go for something called files.walk. As you can read it in here, oops, it's not really readable. So let's actually go in there, say the walk. It says it returns a stream that is lazily populated by walking the file tree rooted at the given starting file. What we want to do is we would want to walk through our directory, right? So the same path. So let's extract the path out to a variable current directory. So we have current directory in here. So we would want files.walk current directory. And you need to specify how many levels deep do we want to go. So let's start with one level deep. What we'll do is do the same thing for each system.out.println. Oops, let's fix this very quickly. What I'll do is I'll move this to one line as well. Now I'll comment this line out list that we did in the previous step. Now what would happen if I run this? Exactly the same output as list because we are giving go through at one level. If I say two levels, mm -hmm, it's going one level down. So it's saying class path ds store dot project. It's also going bin files and source files, right? Let's go four levels deeper. You would have a lot more files that are being printed, right? So it's printing bin files, the directory scan runner.java and the file that we created just now as well. Cool. So we can use the files.walk to walk through a current directory. Now, I would want to filter those files, only the Java files which are present in here. How can I do that? Functional programming, filter, right? So I can have a filter and define a predicate in here. What I'll do is I'll not define the predicate directly in here. I'll take it to a local variable. So I'll want to create a predicate down here. Now the predicate is path. So path is whatever is coming in. So path. What we want to do is we would want to get the string value of path. So string dot value of path and we want to check if it contains dot java, right? So that's or dot ends with is also a good option. Oops, I should not have a semicolon here. That's why there is compilation error. So what we are doing is walk the current directory and filter based on this predicate. And what is this predicate doing? It's just saying Take it to a path variable and it says string dot value of path contains dot dot java. So we are checking the path, the string value of the path if it contains dot java. Let's run this. You'd see that only the java file is printed. So what we are doing in here is walking through a current directory and trying to print files which match a specific condition. There is another method to search through the files. It's called files dot find it the first two parameters are exactly the same current directory and what depth do you want to scan up to the second one is something called a matcher let's just say it's matcher and let's put a semicolon in here now i'll create this as a local variable so control one create local variable as you can see the type of the matcher is a bribe predicate so it's accepting two parameters path and the file attributes as well so now I can define a predicate based on these two. So I can say path comma attributes mapping to what we are defining in here is called a lambda expression, right? So this lambda expression accepts two parameters. That's why within parentheses, I'm putting two variable names, path and attributes. And now I can use these path and attribute names, right? So if I want to filter based on the path and say I want to only get the Java files, I can copy this thing from here. Right? String dot value of path contains dot Java. Now this would return all the files. Now I can actually take this for each and execute it in here as well. So what I'll do is I'll put this into one line and comment this out so this does not 
get executed and let's run this you get the same output but the additional thing that the files.find method provides is the attributes of the file right instead of defining a predicate let's say here we are saying java matcher right so what i can also do is i can copy this and put it down i'll create another matcher here i don't want to use the path i would want to say attributes dot is directory so i only want to print the directories which are present i'll say directory matcher and now we'll use the directory matcher in here now let's see what would happen oops errors exist oops i should not have a semicolon in here right so dot for each that's cool let's format it so that it's clear let's run it mm -hmm. now it's only printing the directories which are present in here you'd see that actually attributes have a lot of other at you can filter based on the creation time you can filter based on the size of the file you can filter based on the last access time and the last modified time as well so you can use any of these attributes in our filter cool in this second step for files we started with using the walk method to look through the directories and print the java files the predicate that the walk offered was just providing us with the path so what we did was we did string dot value of path and checked if it contains java to filter the values but the find method provides us much more better filters so the predicate defines both the path and a few basic file attributes so you can filter based on the name of the file and the path as well as you can filter based on certain characteristics of the file here we are using the directory matcher in the next step let's move towards trying to read from a file i'll see you in the next step until then bye bye this video is part of a java course with more than 250 steps helping you become an expert on java you can find the complete course details in the description of the video along with it you can also find the details of a free pdf with 200 pages of awesome code examples in 28 minutes creating great programmers